welcome to another educational video about screen printing by Catspit Productions. Thanks a lot for clicking on my video today. I really appreciate your time and attention and if you like what you see, please make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. And if you need screen printing equipment or supplies, please check out my offerings at catspitscreenprintsupply.com. Okay, so today's video is about fibrillation. Okay, and I wanted to just kind of talk about this a little bit and maybe demonstrate sort of because I'm not sure that I can really show it on the camera. I don't know if I have anything that has fibrillation, but what is fibrillation? So sometimes you might notice, and I think this is probably especially with plastisol inks, when people tend to um, overwork or overprint the ink on the shirt, you know, we can see the fibers of the shirt raising up off of the knit surface and you know moving into the ink to where when you're finished curing it and you know printing it and curing it and you look at it you can actually see the fibers in the ink you know the printed ink and this could be I think it's probably you know more visible on like you know darker shirts where the fabric is dark and you're printing a light colored garment you know, uh, sometimes it can happen with black ink on a white shirt as well, where um, <clears throat> the fibrillation can actually cause the ink to look faded, um, fuzzy, you know, have a soft look. And uh, for, for, it, for the case of black ink on white shirts, it can actually make the black ink look gray. Okay, so fibrillation basically is when the the hairy, fibrous, you know, parts of the knitted surface of your garment get raised off of the knit and become free and loose and able to be up into the ink. And it's visible, okay? So, one of the first things that I can tell you is that sometimes it's the garment. Like if you're printing on a very soft, brushed knit, that is actually the shirt's knitted and then afterwards the fabric or the fabric is knitted and then afterward the, you know, afterwards the fabric might be brushed to give it a soft uh, feel and that actually is raising some of the fibers off of the, of the tight knitted surface. You know, so sometimes the shirt itself can be a problem with fibrillation and you may even notice it on like test rags Shirts that you've had in a test box, a box of text, test rags, you know, for a long time, been shuffling them around, you know, you go in there looking for a shirt that you can do a test print on, and all that action and motion, and, you know, there could be shirts in there a couple of years old, you know, so when you do test prints on rag t-shirts from a box, sometimes those shirts can show a lot of fibrillation in the test print simply because the fabric is old or used, so to speak. Okay, and it would be the same case with a washed fabric. If you tried to print on a washed fabric, you might see fibrillation as well. But not only that, your ink, you know, that's a whole other topic for a video, but ink doesn't like to bond necessarily to washed fabric, not, not all the time. All right, so that's the first thing we can say is the shirt or the garment itself. You have to look at uh, the tighter the knit is, the smoother the knit is, the smoother and finer the knit and print surfaces of the shirt, the less likely you are to experience fibrillation. But what can you do on press to avoid fibrillation? Okay, so I have my trustworthy cat's bit design and I just have a test rag on here because I'm just going to demonstrate, you know, um, a couple things that might cause fibrillation on a garment that might be prone to fibrillation you know because like I said the better the garment is the less likely you know you would have this problem and fibrillation can be seen either you know before you know right when you print the shirt when you lift the screen up or it can happen like after it's washed okay so um, you know it's something something to consider but it's not always a problem for everyone but one of the things that can cause it is overworking the plastisol ink on the screen and that's why you'll notice when I screen print I flood off palette I always flood off palette okay I don't even know if this screen is printing I just threw some ink on here and there's some 
I got something in my ink there. It was probably on the screen. Okay, so that's why you notice that I flood off palette. Because if you flood like this, right, say I flood like this, it, you'll, I, I don't know if you could guys can see it in the camera, but because of the off contact and such, as I'm doing this, it's actually, there you go, it's actually, you know, pulling some ink through. You see it? That's what off contact is all about. So it's actually pulling some ink through. And, and so the more I do this, and then I do my print stroke like this, what we're actually doing is, is causing a little bit of stencil drag in both directions. And, you know, that's moving the fibers on the shirt or agitating them, so to speak. Okay, so that's something that you don't want to do necessarily. Some people do that. They'll flood on palette. But in my opinion, this can, you know, encourage fibrillation. So that's why instead of flooding on palette, just lift the screen slightly, hold it, flood with one hand, put it down, do your print stroke, and be done with it. Okay, and that's the other thing, is you want to try to get the print off in as few motions as possible. So you want to, you know, not overwork the print. Don't, don't keep setting the screen down and printing it again and again and again and again. You know what I'm saying? You want to try to learn your groove and know how much to flood it. Like, you might have to flood it the first time you're doing, remember, you know, how I do my putty stroke, I push it in a little, then I lift it up. The second time, I do a lot less, and I allow the, the off contact to pull the ink through, right? And I want to achieve the print in as few motions, or as few actions as possible. And that will also reduce the possibility of fibrillation, okay? So any kind of motion, and you don't want to um, you know, you don't want to do this either. Oh, do a print stroke that way and a print stroke this way. That's the same difference because then, you know, you're moving the ink and the screen, the stencil drag, everything is moving in both directions and it's moving much more than if we just flood off palette and then do the print stroke. Okay, so I think that's it really, you know, fibrillation is, is it can be the garment itself, and it can be overworking the ink on the screen. And finally, possibly in some cases, it could be the ink. If the ink is just so super thin, it may not have the opacity or the ability to handle uh, very soft brushed fabrics. Okay? And the other thing that you can do, if you see fibrillation on the first print, like especially with white on black, is you could do a print flash print. And usually, in most cases, the print flash print seals it up really nice because, because the fibrillation is active in the first layer. Like, you know, you do your first print and blah, 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 blah. And if you see some fibrillation, flash cure it, solidify or gel it, right? And then do another cover print over it and it should cover that fibrillation, okay? So those are my tips on fibrillation. So I was just shooting a video about print resolution and print clarity and I did this really flooded out print where I overworked the ink on the black shirt, white ink on a black shirt. And this is as close I, as I can get with the camera, but you can see, I think you can actually see the black fibers are raised. Not only does the print look like crap and it's all flooded out, but the black fibers are actually raised into the ink, you know, the printed ink surface. So that is what fibrillation is. And like I said, it can happen, you know, right away you can see it like this, or it can happen after you wash the shirt, the fibers can come through the ink like that. So um, just trying to show you an example here, because it's hard to do without having like a macroscopic camera capability. That's all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please remember to check out catspitscreenprintsupply.com if you need screen printing equipment or supplies, and make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel today. I appreciate your support very much. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.